The Red Man. What? Who's there? I see your inner hatred and your will to get her back. Oh, really? Do you even feel what I do right now? You have no idea! Listen, I got a challenge for you. Improve yourself enough to slay the most horrific creatures of this world. And show me that you can be my apprentice. I will teach you how to get her back. Uh, fine. I accept your challenge. This is roughly the time I spent on creating a character in Terraria. Or any other game essentially. Let's give it an original name. Beautiful. Revengeance. Um, yeah, sure. Also, I gotta start the bug, let's see what it gives. Oh, cool. Okay. Pretty useful stuff. Mutants gift, Eternity Mode, yeah, sure. What the heck? Freaking Pinky? Really, game? What the heck? Whoa, 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 whoa. What is happening to me? <laughs> I'm bouncing. What the heck? Uh -huh. What are you gonna do now? Ficky Squirrel? Easy free gold? I got somewhat distracted by that Pinky, but yeah. Death Mode. Let's go. That's a lovely list of bosses to defeat. And let me tell you, 100 days will definitely not be enough. On day 2, just constructed some prisons for my NPCs, done some caving and got my first life crystal. Terraria's early game sucks. Does anyone want some buckets? I mean, they should give me wealth at buff, I guess? Yeah, this is cool. Should probably make that. And it's quite cheap too. I wonder if there's anything in here. Oh, <laughs> that's funny. Holy shit, boots and mirror in one chest? No, no, get off me, get off me. Oh. oh fuck. Oh, there's the dungeon. So there will be Sulfur Sea on this side of the map. And as I said, there it is. Not much use for now, but still good to know that it's here. Oh, I forgot about that. Even though this is still quite useful, actually. I mean, hey, free life crystals and magic storage components. Oh, this is so amazing. I love this map. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, leave me alone. What is it with these torches? Hey, yo, what the? Hello oh, there. no, not you. Okay, I'm out of here. I'm not ready for Pluton, the hero, Bilusis, he's here. These storm lions take quite some time to kill, but their mandibles are required to summon the first boss. And also, they can rarely drop a storm drill staff, which summons this cute little guy. Oh, no. No, not you again. I look absolutely savage, with that flower shooting wand and a freaking pumpkin on my head. <laughs> Base expansion time, boom. boom! Boom! Oh, and a bed. Cool. Check this out. Poof! With that single click, I get a tunnel all the way down to the underworld. And apparently trying to conquer crimson with flowers as your weapon and pumpkin as your armor is not the smartest idea. Oh shit, oh shit, oh, uh, nah. What the hell is even hitting me? What the f big brain idea? If I recolor my pumpkin to a dangerously and scary looking color, enemies should be afraid of me, right? Why is my boy jumping like that? What the hell? Okay, maybe try us some luck in the sky. Oh, hang on, what's this? And, and why... What, what the f... I'm getting burned because I'm in space, right? Ah. <sighs> okay, so this planetoid here is a space biocenter lab which is a place where Drayden conducted his experiments. And we've got a charging station and a power cell factory here, which will be important later. Oh wow, that's so much stuff! Awesome! So who is this so-called Drayden? Well, a valued member of Yarim's council having been hired by him to construct various items and using their magic to aid his conquest. Oh sweet, money collector! That item makes money you pick go straight into your piggy bank. Ah, uh, what's this? An onyx excavator key. With this mount you can literally destroy everything on your path. Oh, and by the way, I gathered some obsidian with my bombs, because it will sure be useful later. Damn, they hit hard. Okay, so there's a slime right now, apparently, but um, I'm like nowhere near killing the king slime, so no thank you. Just collecting some sand for my unlimited Molotov cocktails. And because, well, they do throwing damage, I have made myself an obsidian armor, which has a pretty decent defense. And because we're playing Calamity, the set bonus gives me a stealth meter, which is a special feature of the rogue class. And this meter fills up when I'm not attacking, and when it's filled up, it gives me a slight movement speed bonus, as well as reduces the range that enemies aggro on me, and probably, you know, just increases some rogue damage and some shit. But most importantly, if your meter is filled up, the first strike that you do with a rogue class weapon will have an enhanced effect, depending on that weapon, of course. And I found another Drayton's facility. And I'm getting smacked in the face by those mobs here. But it's okay, I'm not dead yet. Yeah, there wasn't really anything special in here. 
a traveling merchant decided to show by, so I bought from him three katanas, which will be used later to craft some other blades and enchantments. And I was finally able to craft the unlimited Molotov cocktails, which will be really handy in dealing with all those mobs. And while I was caving, the Eye of Cthulhu decided that I wanted to spawn, but... Hey Color. What? Wanna play with me? No. Shortly after, I found a spider's nest and burned it to the ground, but I hit like a truck, so I had to teleport out of there and such. Ah, I too. Wasn't really expecting anything else to happen. On day 13, I started the grind for unlimited potions from Louis AFK, and first I needed a solid farm of herbs. I went to Crimson for some more death wits, and then the brain decided to just spawn, and I wanted to see how strong it is. Okay, that was quick. This thing here is a Crimson Shrine and it contains a Crimson Effigy, which is quite useless for me right now, but will be probably used to craft some kind of enchantment. Ooh, there's a Pyramid! Another component for the Supersonic Soul. And finally there is the jungle. And I'm getting obliterated by those creatures. And those piranhas are flying for some reason. Leave me alone! <laughs> I went caving again and found one of the Draydon slabs. Got some heart reach potions from that, nice. Close enough. I also done some micro crafting, some grinding, harvesting stuff. Also build the platform for boss fights. And then I tried to beat the king slime. The fight was absolutely flawless and the first boss was killed, meaning that my 20% damage reduction from early game was gone. Also I was lucky and got king's slasher, which is a really solid early game weapon. Only a fool could be caught by this pitiful excuse for a hunter. Unfortunately, our world has no shortage of those. Then I tried to beat the Eye of Cthulhu. Sus looking eye. So the first phase is like kindergarten difficulty. And yeah, then there's the second phase. <laughs> Whoa, it's mad, it's mad as f How do you even dodge this before the dash? Why are, <laughs> why are they still in place? What is this? Um... After getting absolutely destroyed by the eye, I decided to try on the Desert Scourge. I kinda messed up the first try, but don't worry, second try will be successful. I started my project on mining through half of the map to get to the jungle, but I also needed some Antlion's mandibles to craft another Desert Scourge summons. And then I tried to kill it again, and this time it was successful, and now there's a cool biome underneath the desert. We will go there soon, don't worry. The great sea worm appears to have survived the extreme heat and has even adapted to it. What used to be a majestic beast swimming through the water has now become a dried up and gluttonous husk, constantly on a voracious search for its next meal. I killed this boss three more times, got some juicy loot and some money. Also I got a nice weapon that deals quite a bit of damage, so I decided to try it out on the eye and um... So the traveling merchant sold me a finny that apparently grants me cold and heat protection, so I was able to explore some asteroids. Wasn't that really interesting though? <laughs> 69. Yeah, some potions, potions, yeah, nah. Boring. Then I continued with my tunnel to the jungle, but I had to use bombs because, yeah, crimson. Good thing is that I managed to destroy the first crimson heart, so the rise of the bad the goblin army decided to show up. They were quite easy to beat, nothing really interesting to show you here. Maybe now that I've got the abomination, he will sell me various invasion summons, and the eye decided to spontaneously show up again. Ooh, a meteorite, cool. It took quite a bit of time to kill that mimic. Okay, at this point I'm not even going to show you more deaths to randomly spawning bosses. Let's explore the jungle. Ooh, the first item in the chest, let's go. There is so much mobs in here. Oh my. <laughs> Seriously, a boomerang? Oh, stuff of regrowth, yes. Stop that, why are you so mean? What is this little shit even hitting me? What the? And another mimic down. Ooh, a philosopher's stone. Nice. Uh, there is a goblin tinkerer somewhere. Oh, there he is. Look at that, charm of myths, pre hard mode. <laughs> Okay, day 20, done some base improvements, tried to beat the eye again and failed miserably, crafted another rogue weapon that shoots meteors at your enemies, incredibly boring potion grinding. Wait, do I even have an insurance? Huh? I crafted a plant harvester that will help me collect herbs for my potions. Gathering some bait with a freaking warblade because I don't have anything better. Okay, okay guys, never mind, Got the ball of heart, now I'm a professional. Look at that. Also in the meantime I'm getting some quests done for the angler. I was kinda upset not being able to kill the eye, so I tried to maybe kill the brain, hoping that it will be somewhat easier, and uh, I couldn't even make it to the second phase. 
<laughs> I should really get myself on health insurance. So this is the cool biome I was talking about, aka the sunken sea. Come on, it's almost dead. And it's a freaking mimic here, of course. <sighs> By the way, there's a blood moon and there are some enemies spawning, you know, just a little. Oh, really, game? Why is there so much enemies spawning? No. Hey, caller. What you want this time? Are you really gonna show fishing? Yeah. What's wrong with it? Well, it's boring. Ah, get out of here. It's my video. But, uh, you want action, huh? So here we got it. Have some action. This will be a glowing mushroom biome for Kreblon. A revolver. Cool. I should have bought that ammo box then, but I haven't. And I will pay my price for it. Okay, enough of that death compilation. The next boss that I actually managed to defeat was the Krabilon. A crab and its mushrooms. A love story. It is interesting how creatures can adapt given certain circumstances. This accessory is absolutely bog for the brain. Ooh, this is probably the best attempt so far. Look at how much damage it does, and it heals me for quite a lot. Very nice. But apparently I'm still not strong enough to defeat the brain. Hey look, I got a new weapon. It's called Crystalline and it will be very, very useful. We'll see how in just a second. Well, maybe not necessarily here. Hey, okay, it's going good. It's going fine. Yes! Yeah, finally! Oh, I even got a weapon. Nice. That I... How peculiar. I sensed it watching you more intensely as you grew stronger. So, right now I'm trying to get an accessory that will help me with the brain. I mean, like, not with my brain, but with the brain of Katul. But color, does it drop from King Slime, you may ask? Well, technically yes, because it drops from any treasure bag with a 1.67% chance. The next thing that I needed was an upgrade to my armor, so I went to the Sulfurous Sea to do the Acid Rain event, and I'm going to craft the Sulfurous armor from those scales and the wood from this biome. I mean, first I have to wait for the trees to grow. <laughs> Okay, I couldn't resist, so I planted some more acid trees right at my base. And I got this accessory that I was talking about. It should make fighting the brain somewhat easier. I hope, at least. Oops, you didn't see anything. So fighting the brain with the laudanum is like finding it on an easy mode. Because not only you are immune to confusion, but also you get some buffs when something is trying to apply confusion to you, which was exceptionally useful for the second phase of the fight. And after a bit of fighting, I've managed to tackle down this boss. An eye, and now a brain. Most likely another abomination spawn from this inchoate mass of flesh. Bam, full crimson armor. Then I went to the ice biome to search for ice skates in order to upgrade my boots to frostbar boots. And oh look, there's a chest. <laughs> First chest, that was easy. Then I saw this mysterious creature, so I proceeded to release it from ice. And the loot is not worth your time. A frigid predator that has evolved from canine ancestors with an ability to hibernate for sustained periods of time in order to lurk for its prey. I just for fun tried to conquer the Eater of Worlds, and it turned out that it's a lot harder than the brain. I don't really know why I didn't try that much, but uh, yeah, why, why would I even do that? The next boss on the list was the Perforator Hive. Um, the fight went not that bad actually, and I think I will make it on my third try. Does anybody know what I was doing here? I mean, I'm probably... Oh yeah, I was doing some fishing, okay. And since I was next to a beehive, I summoned a queen bee and died to her, because I was like, haha, I will get the summon item and then I can use it in any biome, so I will summon her on my surface arena. And obviously, this was a disaster. I couldn't even scratch her on the surface of the jungle, so... So I decided to give up for now and went to the underworld to gather some hellstone. And from that hellstone I crafted a very strong fiery spear and challenged the perforators again. And this weapon absolutely shredded them. That way I won on my second try. An abomination of commingled flesh, bone and organ, infested primarily by blood slurping worms. The chunks left over from the brain must have been absorbed by the crimson and reconstituted into it. Killing the perforators made a new ore spawn in my world, the Aerialite Ore. From this material I was able to craft some weapons from Draydon's arsenal, such as the Striking Disc for example. In order to use those weapons you have to charge them in a charging station. You need power cells for that which are produced by Power Cell Factory, 
And yep, those are those structures I got on day 9. But you can find them in any of the Dragon's lab. I also crafted a Pulse Pistol, which is cool. And I also crafted the Rogue Aerospec Armor, which will protect me from fall damage. And I tried to kill the Queen Bee and die to her again. I went to the Abyss to maybe gather some loot, but apparently the only thing that I was really able to get was a Life Force Potion. I mean, it was pretty hard mode, so it is still pretty good. How do you like my contraption? <laughs> So silly. And the time has come to battle the Skeletron. First it didn't seem that bad, but once I got caught by the skull, well, um, bad things happened. But thanks to the Eternity mode I got the summon item and I could simply try again on my main arena. Oh what? He got his arms back? Okay, so the second try was substantially better and the third one was successful. The curse is said to only affect the elderly. After they are afflicted they become an immortal vessel for an ancient demon of the underworld. So of course, after defeating the big bony boy, it was time to explore the dungeon. What? Oh, okay, so skeletons now spawn skulls when they attack you. Interesting. A normal chest next to a golden chest, huh? <laughs> and there's the mechanic. Me. And there's also this guy, he drops a piglin army banner. And if you use this banner, this happens. And yes, this is Minecraft inspired event. Overall, it's not really hard. The enemies here drop, well... <laughs> gold nuggets and you can use them to craft some weapons such as this gun for example very strong by the way and also this is the boss from that event not really challenging oh, what the fuck how did that happen i don't understand okay let's show you some progress so i challenged the slime god and the fight went extremely smoothly it is a travesty one of the most threatening biological terrors ever created if this creature were allowed to combine every slime on the planet, it would become nearly unstoppable. Killing it allowed me to craft a weapon called Carnage Ray as well as the Statigel Armor, which I will use for a while. Don't even ask me what happened here. No, that's a lot of damage. <laughs> well, since I was in the possession of a Shadow Key, I was able to open those chests in the Abyss to gather some juicy loot. And here we go, the first Fargo Souls mod boss encounter. Deviant. And uh, at first it didn't seem that bad, but uh, the second phase... Yeah, what the fuck does even that mean? There is an accessory, however, that will make this fight easier. The Nymph's Perfume. And, uh, well, it drops from Nymphs. So I tried to find one, but I couldn't, so just for fun I summoned that <coughs> bee and noticed that she's a lot less aggressive than on the surface. So having that splendid ancient knowledge, I built an underground jungle arena and... died again. And so I expanded my arena a little bit and finally got the Queen Bee down. As crude as the giant insects are, they can prove useful in certain situations, given the ability to control them. Killing the Queen Bee made certain creatures spawn in my world. I killed a bunch of them and from their drops crafted a summon for the flaming pumpkin. The boss didn't really stand a chance against me. The fight was short and very easy. The burning horror of the night. You release the cursed spirit Ralnek from its slumber. Somewhere in the underworld I found another Draydon slab and he knows here. Oh and I get that perfume but I switch it with my fall damage protection and uh yeah. Uh, I, I can I can move. I can I can do anything. Huh? Close enough. Wait, if I look away from her, she won't petrify me, right? Let's see. Oh. Haha! -ha. Easy game. And such, I've managed to defeat the Deviant Encounter. For a strange, yet helpful person, she claims that it was just a test before the ancient spirits of light and dark consumed this world. And just for fun, I battled again the Wormy Boy, but this time I actually won. And I fought 10 fat slimes at once to get some money. But apparently 3 eyes at once was too much. This day is very boring, just done some fishing and questing. And pretty much the same goes for the next day. Well, those days though were astonishingly boring. Long story short, I was just preparing for the hard mode. Enough, Terrarian. Huh? The time has come for you to face the cursed amalgamation and those fallen creatures to improve what? yourself. What is happening? Don't be afraid. There's another one that will help you. Good luck. Thanks.
Oh. Oh, hello. There is your chest right here. Ward, warding charm of myths. What? How did you how did you get the warp to the charm of myths? Be hard mode. Um <laughs> Eternity mode. <laughs> so with legend on my side, we went to the underworld to battle the wall of flesh. Oh! <laughs> no! Traveling down to you as fast as possible. Oh. No! <laughs> You defeated it! <laughs> we killed each other! <sighs> and GG. Uh, and I killed it right at the elevator, actually. Right at the elevator! <laughs> but because we were dead while the Wall of Flesh was killed, we didn't get our treasure bags. So we had to repeat the process. Oops. I'll try to stop. What's with that lasers? <laughs> what is going on there? Old friends! Okay, now did we get the treasure bags? Yeah, I think we did. Why is the underground like changed like this? Why am I upside down? This is the effect from underground hello. Oh wow. Have your gravity flipped constantly. So basically it says, nah, you wanna chill here? Nah, screw you. Yeah, basically. And we also smashed some altars together. Hey, legend. What's up, man? What you doing? Um, you know, the ocean is such a big, big space. I was thinking, you've got a lot of trash inside of your base. Just take all of the trash, right? And then we just dump it in the wide open ocean. Great idea, right? No, that's not a great idea. I see the deed is done. The unholy amalgamation of flesh and hatred has been defeated. Prepare to face the terrors that lurk in the light and dark parts of this world. Hotline fishing hook. Let's go. By doing all that various fishing quests and, well, overall fishing for potions, I acquired a bunch of crates. And since we are in hard mode now, it's time to open them. <laughs> Look at that. What is this? Something's approaching. Huh. Indeed, Terraria. Oh, it's you again. Oh, those dormant spirits. They are now awake. You have to improve your skills and gear furthermore. Dominating the creature you're about to face is your objective now. Good luck. Oof. Off a great start. <laughs> because it is hardboard right now, I can try to make the unlimited buffs to clear some of my inventory space. Then I went to the Hallow to fish for some potion ingredients. And after that, build an arena for cryogen and try to battle it. And let's say I almost won. This boy is actually hard. And I can't finish making my unlimited buffs because I didn't buy those ammo boxes back then. Now, having a stronger pickaxe, I could make my way into this mysterious spider's den. <laughs> Holy shit. This is actually a little spooky. But without a proper gear and arena, I didn't survive for too long. Wyverns, anybody? Hello? Oh, there is one. Oops. The next day I fought the Sand Elemental and, fun fact, she's quite strong in Eternity mode, but eventually I've managed to defeat her. On day 66 I was setting up teleporters to various locations on the map. And such, I've got a teleporter to the Hello, Crimson and Jungle. Using a forbidden fragment I crafted a cool weapon called the Relic of Ruin and uh, just wanted to show you this unique weapon design, that's all. Another fun fact, this weapon is absolutely useless against the wall of flesh. Nope. Can you die already and give me the sorcerer emblem, please? Thanks. Okay, come on, this boss is not that hard, let's try again. Sometimes I just don't don't understand what is hitting me. I don't know. By the way, this boss seems quite tanky. Oh, whoa, so now you wanna dash into me. And what the fuck is this in what 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 the hell is this? Ah, uh, okay. Oh wow, so this weapon is actually quite OP if you're standing like really really close to the enemy. Okay, so I made an actual arena for the Araneas, Ar Araneas, Ar Araneas, for the spooky spider boss. And the fight looked exactly like that, you just circle the boss and DPS it to high heavens and that's it. Takes a while though, but nothing particularly challenging. An enormous arachnid that seems to be the empress of this lair. Perhaps many have fallen into her trap. Oh shit, not good. 
Okay, so I don't have high expectations, but uh, maybe maybe the twins are easier than the destroyer. Um, okay, never mind. Excuse me, where are my FPS? Oh, thank you. Oh, yeah, it will take me a while. Oh, and yeah, new teleporters. Uh, from now on, the day counter will be scuffed, because every time I summon a mech boss with 4 ghost summoning item, it will put the time to 7.30 p.m., so... For the following five days, I was on the brink of going insane. I tried to kill the Echo Scourge and failed. Tried a new weapon and set up against the Mary bosses and failed. Made a teleporter to the ocean, formed some pirates for a weapon and got the weapon I wanted. Pile? Tested the new weapon on the Wall of Flesh. It's good. Ah, oh, look at that smooth gameplay. Yeah, even with this weapon, I still suck. Okay, maybe the Meteor stuff is the way. Okay, but at the end, it, the Arbalest shredded through the Aquatic Scourge, which was a huge game changer, and you will see why. A horror born of pollution and insatiable hunger. Based on size alone, this was merely a juvenile. These Scourge creatures are the largest aquatic predators, and very rarely do they frequent such shallow waters. After the boss fight, I defeated the second tier of Acid Rain event, which effectively gave me nothing. But it didn't really matter because from that treasure bag I got CC Ring, let's go! Oh, <laughs> easy game. So the CC Ring is a weapon that drops from the Arcadic Scourge with a 1% chance and only in Revengeance mode. Um, well, at least before the new Calamity update, but we'll get into that. That weapon was doing huge amounts of damage to these bosses. But it's not that I killed the Destroyer of the Twins. <laughs> um, probably I still suck. But I tried to kill the metal version of Bony Boy and he turned out to be surprisingly easy. I literally killed it first try. What a silly and pointless contraption for something created with essence of pure terror. Draydon obviously took several liberties with its design. I am not impressed. Good job. Killing one of them has weakened the other two. Why am I still doing this for you? Do you want to hear her? What? Daddy, is that really you? Help me, please. They've taken me somewhere. I'm so afraid. Now, go and kill the other two. Good luck. During those five days, I defeated the Brimstone Elemental, killed some ogres during the Old Ones Army event, and defeated the Calamitas? I don't know. Something weird happened, probably because of two different difficulty modes active at once. And finally killed the Destroyer in this ridiculous fight. Just... just watch it. What the fuck is going on?! A machine brought to life by the mighty souls of warriors and built to excavate massive tunnels in planets to gather resources. Could have proven useful if Draydon didn't have an obsession with turning everything into a tool of destruction. Come on, come on. I can do this. Nope. Oh, come on, it was so close. So, the new Calamity update is finally alive. We've got new Adrenaline and Rage mode meters, a bunch of boss reworks that you're probably aware of, and obviously the malice mode. I can't even outrun them with my unicorn. Oh cool, now I can't even kill the skeleton. <laughs> I'm just hitting zeros. <laughs> oh, it's so silly. Okay, let's maybe leave it as it was for now. Okay, the new Calamita seems to be far more aggressive than the previous one. Oh, hi there. Oh, he's fast. Oh, wow, that was intense. But I didn't. What? I did enjoy this fight, though. Oh, come on! Yes, finally. The biomechanical waters of the night, originally created as security using the souls extracted from human eyes, these creatures did not belong in this world. It's best to be rid of them. Now, killing all the free mechanical bosses doesn't give you a single Hallowed bar. Instead, you have to mine for the new Hallowed Orb that spawns in a hollow. And I spent a while mining for that orb to get some Hallowed Bars. Then I crafted a tactical rifle which turned out to be insanely good. Oh! 
Yo, oh, look at the God. DPS. <laughs> oh, really? Okay, so there you go, another Calamitas fight. This time it went a lot better, and uh, as you can see, hang on, hang on. Yeah, I survived the Blood Hell phase, and shortly after, she's dead. Oh man, this fight was really fun. Oh, I can't wait to see the new Supreme Calamitas. You are indeed stronger than I thought. Though the bloody inferno. Impressive. You have killed my clone. I shall observe you from now on. Don't mind me now. Continue your journey. So there was nothing else left to do other than kill the Pontera. Whew, let's go. It was easier than I thought. Well done, you killed a plant. It was used as a vessel to house the spirits of those unfortunate enough to find their way down here. I wish you luck in dealing with the fallout. Ah, uh, this boss fight is so tedious. Like, it's just a giant DPS dummy with a lot, a lot of health. Um, I got bored and distracted, okay. Yo, let's, let's check that out. Oh, and my whole mushroom biome turned into jungle. Shit. Okay, so now after the Plantera has been defeated, you can mine perennial ore in the cave layer. And uh, I think this is a good opportunity to upgrade my armor, which, uh, well, is still the same as pre mech bosses. So now I have the river armor, which should give me a massive boost to survivability, especially life regen, at the price of decreasing my damage a bit. And obviously, then I went to the jungle temple and discovered that massive golem chamber. And so, since I was already here, I tried to beat the golem, which you may expect ended up being a complete disaster. Then I defeated the Plantera again for some chloropite ore. Yes, she drops that in eternity mode, as well as a special item that I want to get, but uh, well, instead she gave me the X. Then I killed her twice, but uh, still nothing. So I thought maybe let's fight the Siren and the Leviathan, just to, you know, don't get bored. And it was another disgustingly easy fight. First I killed the Siren, and after a while also the Leviathan was dead. <laughs> the fuck? An odd pair of creatures, one seeking companionship, and the other seeking sustenance. Perhaps two genetic misfits outcast from their homes that found comfort in assisting one another. And into the next boss fight we go. This time it is Ostrom Aureus, I think, this is how we pronounce it, I don't know. But as I said, this fight is really boring and consists of just DPSing it down and that's pretty much it. A titanic cyborg infected by a starborn disease, expelled from the belly of an ancient god. The destruction of this creature will not prevent the spread of the disease. Unfortunately though, the golem turned out to be unbeatable with all those difficulty modes active at once. So I had to disable death mode, a revengeance mode, and I decided to fight it with only the eternity mode active. A primitive construct. I admire the lizard race for their ingenuity, though finding faith in such a flawed idol would invariably lead to their downfall. Just to get it done, I beat the Great Sand Shark and tried to defeat the Mechanical Queen Bee, but it didn't work out that well, so um, I needed to upgrade my gear. The first destination was the Abyss, from where I mined some Scoria ore, and then I killed a bunch of Martian Saucers. Um, I mean, I mean, I killed a bunch of Martian Saucers, just to get some loot, hopefully, but really I only got some garbage. Oh, it sounds like a stuck pig. Oh, oops. Okay, maybe, maybe let's try again. This, this time, this time it will work out. Come on, come on. Almost there. Almost there. Oh, and it's dead. Sweet. The flesh golem constructed using twisted necromancy during the time of my conquest to counter my unstoppable forces. Its creators were slaughtered by it moments after its conception. It is for the best that it has been destroyed. Fought the old one's army again and made it to the Betsy only to get obliterated by its debuffs. At least from bullying Plantera again I got the heart of nature which grants me the seventh accessory slot. Uh, that boss seems to be far more difficult than I thought and uh, I will have to either try to beat it over and over again or improve my gear some way. 
And by the way, this is my best attempt so far. So I tried various melee weapons and uh, they failed. I battled the golem 2.0 once again because I want to get a weapon that maybe will help with the next bosses. And uh, yeah, I got uh, all that shit from it and uh, this is the most important item from that. But we'll continue in the second part. You're doing great, Zoraiden. Now the ancient song in which you all awaits you. You have to rest. 